In 2022, I graduated with a degree in maths. And since then, I don't think I've really used it besides with Lego to create some minifigure scout builds. Now, Lego do have a fair share of sets they release that do line up with the scale of these ships in the Star Wars universe. But for the most part, a lot of work does have to be done. So if you didn't know, yes, Anakin's 2019 pod racer is minifigure scale. And I do still think that this was the best set release that year. It's close between this and Boba's fire spray. But more recently, we've had the ATTE Walker, which is also actually minifigure scale. Now, there's a few ships that just missed the mark such as the Coruscant Guard gunship. While the wings of this do represent the wingspan of the ship in the Star Wars universe, the front does fall a little short. I think it's only about 5'10 studs short, but in universe, the nose of this gunship would probably be out to where the gunners end. So Star Wars definitely have some correctly scaled ships sent out every single year, but some of them, as I said, need a bit of work. Now, the TIE Fighter they released back in 2012 was perfect for my minifigure scale that I will get into in a minute. Basically, for my minifigure scale, each one by one squared off plate is about 30 centimeters wide and 12 centimeters tall. And sometimes because of how small the ships are, Lego can sometimes dramatically increase the size of ships in order for better display or playability. You can see Yoda's Starfighter is meant to be a little smaller than Anakin's ETA, but it definitely looks a bit bigger than it should. Now, as most of you may know, I do have a rubricable page where I sell most of my minifigure scout instructions, just like Kenobi's Delta, which is made solely using the set that Lego released recently. And some of my models are even complete customs with no instructions or no piece counts, no boxes of Lego bricks as the base, which lets me make some really detailed models such as this V-Wing, which was part of my Bad Batch wave. I really do love my collection of ties here. We have the original 2012, that is a Lego model. And then the one that they released in 2020, I think it was, I transformed into a tie Interceptor. This is completely minifigure scale and now you can probably understand why I don't want to be picking up the UCS one. This is the perfect size. You can hold the cockpit. It's a very sturdy model and you can just swoosh this about and even chase after a Fang Fighter, which I have previously built using Bo-Katan's Gauntlet. And well, it doesn't really look too intimidating compared to the Interceptor. So you can see why Lego blow these ships up for play scale. I mean, this is a very fragile build at that. And if you have two children playing with these sets, well, the one with a Fang Fighter will want a bigger ship. So in the set, they did make them roughly one-to-one -one scale, but even the recent tire bomber is somewhat minifigure scale, and I've used the wings from the bomber as well as mix up the pieces on the inside to build Vader's tire advance. With Vader standing on top, very iconic scene in Rebels, but how do I know if my builds are minifigure scale? Well, now that I've shown you pretty much half of my custom minifigure scale builds, I do have a full page of all the different ships that I've looked at ever doing minifigure scout. A load of these are speeders when I started doing the speeder bundles, but as they weren't that popular, I decided to stop after the first one, or I think I managed to release a second one. So who knows, there might be a third one coming soon. But as you can see on this page, I have the lengths of all the ships, which I get from just Googling it. This is a Wikipedia page of the X-Wing, as you can see, all of the lengths are just down here, 13.4, 11.7, and 2.4. And that is all you need for minifigure scale. That allows you to get a nice representation of the size. I tend to have a base plate in front of me. So I go to my spreadsheet here, whack in the lengths, and automatically it will divide that by 0.3 because, as you heard, each stud is meant to represent 30 centimeters, which is 0.3 meters. And whilst you could convert it, Working in meters is just easier for my scale. That makes it about a 1 to 45 scale. So a lot of people hit minifigure scale and try to base the ships around the minifigures, which is good if you're going about it the right way. But the key part is to get that scale right because a ship might look correct, such as Kenobi's Delta. It doesn't look too bad from the playset. But once you realize that a minifigure is meant to represent the average height of 180 centimeters, 
each minifigure is actually four centimeters tall and is 45 times smaller than the average height of 180 centimeters. You get the perfect scale for your Lego ships. And I've used this for all of them, including my Anakin Delta here. And this looks the best because it matches what you're seeing on screen. It doesn't look like it. It looks the exact same, or at least in terms of dimensions. Of course, Lego bricks can only go so far. But once you've got the length, width, and the height, which is just off screen in studs, and there are a few extra details, such as the Lambda T4A, you need to know how long the feet are, how wide the ramp is, and the size of the ship when its wings are both unfolded and folded up. So I have room for extra details, of course. Then you can mark these out on a base plate. You've seen it most recently for my video where I built the V-Wing shuttle. I'd mark out the width, the length, and the height using bricks because I actually convert the height into plates rather than the width of a brick because you don't tend to build with snot bricks all the time. So instead of dividing by 0.3, I actually divide by 0.12, which is the height of a plate in that 1 to 45 scale. And that then gives me the cube that I can be working on, especially if you're working in something like Studio, it makes it so easy to see the height of it. And even when I'm physically building, as I said, I whack a base plate down and I build a nice barrier with the width, the length, and the height out of my other bricks and make sure that at all times the ship fits within them restraints. So hopefully that gives you an idea of why I think my minifigure scale is best. Of course, everyone's gonna think their own minifigure scale is best unless they've only just started work on it. But if you do wanna purchase any of these instructions and support the channel, I'll leave the link to Rubrickable down in the description below as it is with pretty much every video. And I really hope you enjoy my builds going forward because hopefully they're only gonna get bigger and better. But I hope this video provides some reasoning as to why my minifigure scale model is just that and mini figure scale and why I use this 1 to 45 scale which I think for Lego is superior to anything else unless you're working in micro scale or building ships like the UCS series that aren't meant to be mini figure scale they're meant to be bigger they're meant to be better there's a reason the mini figures come on a plaque rather than in the ship the UCS sets even the Veneta the Veneta is not mini figure scale but if that was to be built minifigure scale, you wouldn't be able to fit it in a Lego delivery truck, let alone try and box it up and sell it in one of their stores. So let me know down in the comments what you think of my minifigure scale. If you have a separate minifigure scale, definitely let me know down in the comments what you base yours off of because you don't have to use mine. The good thing about Lego is you can create whatever you like. So perhaps you're scaling to another Lego set because this minifigure scale did originate with Anakin's Phantom Menace pod race and I just love the scale of this so much it looks so close to what we see in the movie and that began my minifigure scale so I hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it and subscribe for more awesome Lego content and may the bricks be with you always